it's like a table, but it's a cloud, and it was anchored down, but the rope was snapped, and there's four people sitting at it, all ready to eat, like dinner, but on the place where I'd sit, the food is kind of like a monster. There's barbed wire around it, and the magnifying glasses on the monster make it look bigger. And then everybody else's plates, there's an eye where their food would be, sort of looking at where I'd be. And the knife and the fork have faces and arms and legs like ready to run away. Mm. And is it a sort of like a, a map, a world map? Yeah. Can you say a bit about that, or what that bit's about? Sort of that... At that point, food was like my world. That was all that was going on. It seemed like it was a very scary place. Yeah. Pencils were what felt safest, just to ease that and not just get messy and not have so much control over it either. Yeah. Mm. So going back, looking in the in the picture again, um, so the yeah, possibility of eating, so the, the knives and forks would run away. Yeah. So you couldn't eat and the food was monstrous. I'm, I'm just thinking about the, the eyes of... Um, uh, the, the other three people's food. Can you say a bit about that? When we used to eat like, all together, all our plates always have more food on than mine and look different and just look at me like, I don't know, just sits there. I hated it being there, I'd rather just be on my own or at least just with mum. But when there was too many people, it was just horrible. Mm. When you look at your, your relationship to food there, what, what's your relationship to food now? It's a lot better now, but sometimes you st I still think about food in that way. But I suppose it's easier just to get on with it and just to be okay with food. I remember you just going, you never had any enjoyment of food. Do you, do you, are you able to enjoy it at all now? I suppose that's a work in progress. <laughs> and I still think about when I've seen the dietitian and she talks about food like petrol. And because I do lots of stuff, then I need more, so it's easier because I want to carry on doing what I do. Tell me about what, um, what this one's about. So it's me finding someone I loved. And about it about to burst. Yeah. But, um, so th this this was a very important time for you because you hadn't talked to anyone else about um, about being gay, had you? No, not really. And it was still sort of like a, a, a sort of secret in the family and that your mum had guessed a bit, hadn't she? Yeah. Well, it wasn't very nice. And two of you were literally in a bubble cut off from other people. Yeah, only some knew, so it wasn't. And then the ending of that relationship was a very important phase for you. Yeah. How, how do you think doing that, that picture uh, helped in the process? Getting things out in the open and allowing it to be talked about instead of me bringing it up. The picture sort of did it for me. And it felt better that the picture was there first and then talking about it afterwards more than me talking about it first and then drawing a picture about it. Because it did feel that it changed a lot in the therapy after. What? Yeah, I think that's why I did it in pen. Not just colour, but it was felt tip. It's more permanent than pencil. Ah. Right. How is, I mean, as a general thing, how has is, how is art therapy been different from, from talking? Just being allowed not to talk if you don't want to. It's not based on talking. So if you don't want to, you can just draw instead of talking. Which is a lot easier. But what would you say has made the most difference for you in art therapy? Just through pictures and that, that you can find a way to understand more. Then just thinking or talking, you get confused. But it's easier if you can see it. Seeing it helps make sense. Yeah.